This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got my co-host back in the studio with me, Robbie Hall. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome there, Kathy. You weathered the uh, cold weather and you walked over here this morning. Like you do every day, you're out walking all the time, despite the weather. So I'm going to throw the show over to you. Who's your special guest today? My guest today is Constable Aaron Tompkins from Iowa Smith Falls Police Department. Thanks for joining us. Always today. a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And uh, you always uh, put me on the hot uh, seat here, so I'm looking forward to this. Winter is here. And we need to be careful driving. What do you suggest drivers do now that there is snow? Well, as we know, it got cold early this year, which uh, I don't enjoy. And uh, some white stuff on the ground early, again, uh, not happy. However, we live in Canada, and this is uh, what we have to deal with from uh, the winter months on. So, some tips for drivers, suggestions, right? That's what we're looking for here. So, um, the biggest thing is you got to make sure your car is warmed up before you go. And what I mean by warmed up is cleared off so that your, your windshield, you can see through it. You'd be amazed of what we get and what we see on the roadways. Um, and then your vehicle is cleared off being your roof, your trunk, your hood, um, all your windows, your sides, rear, and front. So those are the very important things. Just before you leave your laneway, um, you have to make sure it's safe. And those are all requirements. They're not suggestions. We're not asking people. That's the law when you're driving. That's uh, number one. Number two is um, if you're going maybe on a longer trip or if you're, you're commuting into the city, maybe keep an eye on the forecast if it's going to be a really bad weather. Allow your times or allow for extra time to get to work. That's that's a big one. So you're not in a hurry, and uh, kind of going into that is uh, you need to slow down on the roads because, as we know, they get slippery, they get icy. Uh, they may look clear, but uh, if they're black, typically that means they're icy. Uh, in the winter, because we salt the roads, they usually go to that nice white, uh, grayish color. And uh, again, those are the, I would say the, the easiest tips. Um, just to just to keep yourself safe and everybody else safe for that matter. We depend on snow plows to clean our roads and streets. What are parking rules around parking on the streets? Yeah, so this is uh, like everybody's favorite topic to talk talk about in November is uh, the winter bylaw parking. So from November 15th all the way until March 31st, 2023, once it hits April 1st, then you're okay. But in that time frame, so this year it was the 15th of November, we didn't have any uh, significant snowstorms before then. So the 15th, always, there's no exceptions, all the way until March 31st in the next year. And we're not allowed to have any vehicles parked on the roadways from midnight to 7 a.m., seven days a week. It's not a Monday to Friday, it's not just weekends, it's every day. And because, like he's worded in that question, is uh, the snow plows. So if they're trying to clear the streets, if there's a whole bunch of cars parked on them, it makes it very difficult and uh, hard to navigate. And uh, we don't want any accidents with a, a snow plow in a parked vehicle. So uh, the bylaw authorizes us and bylaw department to remove vehicles if they're uh, in, in under that uh, bylaw and they're um, not authorized to park there. So we remove them and uh, some people unfortunately wake up in the morning and their cars are not there. And then there's uh, some fines and tickets associated to that. So uh, again, just a, a friendly reminder, midnight to seven, every day of the week from November 15th till the end of March next year. Can you tell us about the wide program? Yeah, so every year, um, so RIDE, everybody knows it, but it's uh, Reduced Impaired Drivers Everywhere. That's the, the acronym, so RIDE. Um, we do a holiday RIDE schedule. So ours started on, uh, I believe it was the 17th of November. So um, just be mindful. We're going to be out there, and we'll be very visible. We're always wearing the 
the bright yellow jackets with reflective on it and uh, there's always a few police cruisers and uh, three or four police officers down there um, so obviously uh, like the Cornelia Street underpass that's a, that's a pretty common one people do see us there all the time but we also uh, choose Coming some home from the, uh, the, Santa, no this, the hockey games right so what that makes sense we're gonna hit a lot of vehicles and a lot of drivers so we want to make sure that uh, the roadways are safe but uh, we also do pick some um, out of the way if you would um, streets as well just to uh, to change it up but uh, you can expect that all the way until the new year so uh, we'll be out there I, I, I assure you that we have lots of men and women who have signed up uh, for this purpose and uh, that's our job we want to make sure that uh, people aren't drinking driving uh, or doing drugs or combination thereof and um, just a reminder that we do have the technology and the training and uh, specialty expert police officers within our police service that um, we drug recognition experts so we can detect it we also depend on our volunteer firefighters what should we do when we see a green flashing light in a vehicle? Yeah, so great question. So a green flashing light under the Highway Traffic Act, which is all the laws in regards to um, Ontario drivers. So there's an exception in there. Um, so it's volunteer firefighters. That's, that's a prominent flashing green. Um, do we have to stop? Do we have to pull over for them? No, as other drivers on the road, but it's a courtesy, right? So a lot of small communities, ours included, we have a lot of volunteers that are going to respond to if my house was on fire, if your house was on fire. So what we ask is people to slow down, pull over if safe to do so, yield to oncoming um, green flashing light vehicles. And uh, these men and women, they're, they're responding. They're, it's an emergency. They're trying to get to help somebody save a property, um, and a traffic accident, you name it. They respond to a whole bunch of things. So, uh, again, it's not the law where you have to, but it's a courtesy, and then uh, that's, that's what we're reminding motorists. If you see it, that's what it is. It's an emergency. Um, so if safe to do so, make sure that uh, you try and pull over and yield to them. Christmas is only a few weeks away. Will our police department be collecting letters again this year for Santa Claus? Oh yes we will. And uh, we're going to start that on the 1st of December. And I believe we were going to run it, was it the 15th or 16th? 16th? That, the 16th being that Friday. And that way uh, the little elves in, uh, in the police service can make sure that Santa gets those letters and then the letters can get back to the, uh, the children that wrote the letters. And what we do love every year, um, and, and some kids are really, really great at it, is the decorating envelopes, drawing pictures. Um, Santa has told me that this is what he really likes, and Mrs. Claus, she loves seeing that. So, you know what, uh, decorate the heck out of them and uh, make those lists good. And... Uh, we have a lot of fun doing it and uh, again another great program we're happy to do it um, we'll do a Facebook post on our on our social media as well as um, just letting people know the cutoff dates the start time how to submit the letters so there's an email address and there will be the uh, old-fashioned drop mailbox outside the uh, the police service on the first so I'm a Smith for Santa Claus Parade is Saturday, December 10th. It is nice to see police officers there keep people safe. Yeah, and the biggest part is uh, the guy in the end, right? We've got to make sure he gets uh, from start to finish, doesn't fall off, right? So we don't need any of that. But uh, no, we're happy to do it, and uh, we really look forward to the Santa Claus Parade every year. And we were just making some comments the other night about it, but um, how it switched to that nighttime parade with all the lights, it's just so much more spectacular. A lot and, of communities... And this year it's cowboy. I know, it's cowboy themed. So it's going to be really interesting. See how many horses come out, a lot of cowboy hats maybe. But uh, you know what? It's going to be a great time. And uh, we are happy to make sure that Santa gets uh, safely from start to finish. 
as well as everybody else that's in between because uh, we know it is busy and the only thing we do ask is uh, when the parade's coming down obviously we don't want people children running in front of the parade while it's going on if even if there's a, a small gap we don't want you running across the street uh, I believe they're uh, instructed not to throw candies this year so again um, there'll be lots of other vendors out uh, I know Remax is normally out doing popcorn and stuff like that so there'll be lots of other goodies but um, we just want to make sure everybody's safe and most importantly is uh, get to see Santa thanks for being here today I mean look forward to see to our must me visit from you here on FOI. And thank you for joining us today, Aaron. Have a great day. Thanks, buddy. And uh, I appreciate you not giving me too many hard questions today. <laughs> Only one or two in there. So better than the last time. Oh, now he's going to throw it over to me. I'm going to And Kathy the hard is up <laughs> next. So I don't know what she has prepared. But uh, you know what? This is uh, it's my pleasure. And uh, Always an honor to be interviewed by Mr. Hall here. So Absolutely, absolutely. It's a pleasure to have him here as part of our team here too. You are a volunteer with our volu or with our uh, food bank, our community food bank. I didn't realize that till the other day I because have, you were helping out with BAM as well, Build a Mountain Yeah, food. I have many mysteries. Yes, you um, do. I do volunteer quite a bit on my own time in the community, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is great. And uh, again, don't do it for any recognition. It's more just I like giving back to the community that uh, I work in and I eat here, I play here. So you know what, why not? So um, I have about four or five different organizations that I volunteer with and the food bank, that's uh, obviously a, a no brainer for me, um, especially in the last couple of years with that increase of um, need. And uh, now even more so with the, the inflation rates and the cost of everything is just ridiculous. So uh, yeah, so I was there, bam, we were, um, I think I showed up at 9.30 and we didn't end until almost 5, so it was a great day. Uh, so many, I, I watched a lot of the interviews you guys went around and did, and uh, we had such an amazing team. Um, I was just one, there was probably 30 or 40 of us total that were uh, out as part of this uh, BAM campaign for Smith Falls. Yeah, the numbers have increased so much, people need our food bank, so to have yeah. a, pro a program like that, the event was great. Was yeah, great. so even locally here, uh, our numbers are higher than like surrounding communities so I think there other communities around 30 or 25 to 30 percent of an increase mm -hmm. and we're closer to that 40 percent increase right. mark and uh, it is scary but you know what um, they're doing a great job there and a lot of volunteers they, they do a wonderful job so and another way to, to support our food bank is to go to the holiday train holiday train yeah so that's coming up as well and uh, they will definitely have a, a, a big drop-off box or something there um, that's another uh, great initiative and uh, just want to say a big shout out to a lot of our uh, local grocery stores for participating and doing up the uh, the bags they oh, were just yes. so easy uh, I was on the back end so the stuff would get delivered and then uh, one of my roles was we're like a big assembly line we're just um, putting stuff away and uh, it really really was efficient and uh, really well ran and it was uh, great to be part of that was my first BAM with uh, with the food bank so uh, you uh, certainly are a well-oiled machine over there because they have to open the big doors to let everything in and yeah. we're trying to get it in as quickly as possible just to keep the heat in the building too, yeah right? it gets but cold in there with a big door it's a, yes, it's a big door yes, and for sure yeah. for sure it was amazing to see everybody over there just working together and it's so important our numbers are gone up that's that's more the need for the need for sure exactly for sure now you also uh are going to be a celebrity server i heard at this event we had yeah. some people here from the high school this morning the principal and one of the council members amazing yes that's yeah. november 30th that's wednesday you're going to be a celebrity server and uh 10 percent yeah. of everything i don't know how well we'll do <laughs> in a in a former career i may have done some serving so i have a bit of um a bit of knowledge and skill we'll say but uh, Deputy Chief Empey and I are going to be there next Wednesday um, from 5 to 8. And uh, it, it's a great initiative, great uh, on Boston Pizza to do something like this. And you know what? It goes right back into the school and the programmings uh, that they're fundraising for. And uh, when we were asked, we jumped all over that and said, uh, definitely on it. I love Boston Pizza too. Yeah. So uh, hopefully they'll give me some food. That's uh, <laughs> They may feed you, right? See what, yeah. they, see what they have some leftover pizza or something in the back for me. 
that. That's right. That's right. Now lock it or lose it. I know mm -hmm. we talk about it all the time because I just think it's so important. Just to, it's so easy to lock your car, and uh, you may not lose your important items inside. But right now, my goodness, people are cr are Christmas shopping and everything. There's lots yeah. of uh, important items in the back seat of your car. So a couple <laughs> key words in there: busy Christmas mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And cars. Yeah. So uh, add those all together. It's that perfect combination. People get forgetful. They're in a hurry. Uh, Christmas shopping, I'll just run in quick. These are crimes of opportunities. Doesn't matter if it's daytime, nighttime. It literally takes five seconds. If Kathy Botham has something beautiful in her back seat and I see that her door is unlocked, guess what? I have a new PS5 now and it mm -hmm. took me less than five seconds. So right. again, and it really doesn't look like you're doing anything suspicious because there's so many vehicles, so many people out and uh, people are just focused on one thing rather than one car on the street and there's nobody else around and it's the middle of the night, that may be a different circumstance. But again, just that friendly reminder and we do this so often, but we still get calls. So we, we will continue to do it until we stop getting calls and that is averted. But uh, again, it doesn't matter where you are, parking your vehicle at home, make that part of your nighttime routine, as mm -hmm. we said, check your doors, windows uh, and vehicle. And uh, if you need to be out um, or if you are buying a lot of Christmas gifts, put them in the trunk, out of sight, throw a blanket over, just make it not visible. That's right, yeah. that's right. And one other thing, you know, uh, before we wrap up too, I mean, we've talked about the gift card scams and everything mm -hmm. too. People are shopping and they're buying lots of gift cards, but there is, yeah. so you can tell sometimes when somebody yeah. needs to be alerted. Not as frequent as it had been, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, a positive thing. Maybe we've done some good education out in the public. I think so. Or people are just getting educated as a, a society more, hopefully a bit of both. But uh, it definitely does still happen, and it's that pressure. It's usually a phone call, um, and they would direct you, Kathy, you need to go to Shoppers Drug Mart. It's 54 Beckwith Street North, and you need to buy $200 gift cards in this uh, Google Play, iTunes, whatever. They're really specific. Mm -hmm. They'll often stay on the line with you just to make sure that you're engaged. Um, and we, we've had a, a few in the last few months, but this time, because people are buying a lot of gift cards uh, again for the retailers just to be wary of that and uh, just ask it it's really asking a few simple questions are these Christmas presents no it's actually uh, my grandson's in jail and he needs this to get out so that's a it's a red flag that employee would say I think you're being scammed let's call the police and and, it, and that does happen so yeah. um, so we're happy to take those calls and go down and uh, talk to those individuals and uh, I've actually engaged with somebody that was standing in line elderly gentleman and uh, he was on the phone so I took the phone just said this is a scam and ended the conversation and that one was averted but uh, so uh, we don't get lucky all the time like that so right. Right. more people right. out there the more that we talk about it the less well, uh, he that was it lucky that you were standing right there Exa well yeah. that, that was the employer that actually called and oh, we oh. responded mm -hmm. and they kind of kept that individual busy for a few minutes right and then we showed up and uh, kind of took over from there Wow! Wow. Well, it has gotten better. I haven't heard about it as much as we used to, but yeah. No, yeah, yeah, it still yeah. happens, so for yeah, sure. Yeah, keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it. Is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap up? I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll uh, be back in the new year, maybe with uh, one of my co-workers, because we're going to do a bit of a transition, but we'll keep that kind of a secret for now. But uh, in the new year, I'll definitely be back, and uh, I'll bring somebody that looks like me and wearing the same uniform, and uh, we'll ask, uh, it is a him? And we'll ask uh, him a lot of questions and put him on the hot seat. So. Ah, he's got some training to do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put him under the Robbie's, the Robbie <laughs> light, eh? For sure, for sure. Well, thank you very much for joining mm. us again. Constable Aaron Tompkins from Westmouth Falls Police Department. Merry Christmas. Mm, Have a you. safe and wonderful holiday. Both of you, Robbie, I'll see you again for sure. He'll be back here on FYI. But we look forward to having you back here in January. Awesome. Thank you, guys. And uh, again, Merry Christmas and have a safe and happy holidays.